From the Toronto Star, I'm Sabah Etazaz, and this matters. Last year, at the height of COVID-19 and the first lockdown, I started this podcast in my closet. But there are only so many episodes you can do from a closet, and the cats were getting territorial about their space. Since then, I'm among the many work from homers trying to hear themselves think and talk and, in my case, record while fighting the sounds of horns, sirens, jackhammers, drilling. But as with the rest of it, we're all in this together too. Construction work has been deemed essential in Ontario and has continued throughout the pandemic. Brian Bradley is here to tell us about Torontonians trying to cope including a musician in lockdown who's finding it hard to compete with the orchestra of noise right outside her apartment. It's so loud. It's really awful. And especially for a musician, I'm trying to record. It's not going to happen today. Brian is a digital producer for The Star, but also he's part of our podcast team. Welcome, Brian. It's good to have you. Thank you, Sam. Nice to be on the other side of the microphone. It's nice to have you. So tell me about Carrie Chestnut. What's going on in her neighborhood and how is she doing with all that noise? Carrie Chestnut is a longtime Toronto musician. She's a sax player, singer, and sometimes flautist. And she's lived in the same apartment building for 30 years, right downtown in the core, in the middle between Young and Church Streets on a side street there. So two busy streets on either side. And she tells me that in that time, over the last 30 years before COVID lockdown, she's never had a problem. She's always been able to rehearse, record for projects at home. She has a studio set up. But come COVID and working from home, everything changed. You'd think that the world may have gone quiet, but in Carrie's case, um, in the case of other tenants in her building, there are 416 units, the noise actually increased due to development in the area, specifically an ambitious condo build at Church and Charles Street. Compounding that, the property manager in the building saw COVID lockdowns as an ability to begin renovations because over 100 units in the building emptied out and he knew the basement garage needed doing. So since it was a higher vacancy rate, he went right to it and thought it would have little impact on the people there, which was exactly the opposite. And because construction, including renovations, is considered essential business in the province of Ontario, actually with extended hours, you can do it for 16 hours a day. The noise is almost nonstop most days, making it impossible for Carrie to practice and to record and for all her other fellow tenants to have any peace. Believe me, a certain podcaster gets it. And for her, Brian, this is not just a noise complaint, right? This is her livelihood that's being disrupted at a time when bars, concerts and, you know, other money generating venues are closed. So this is not just about being bothered by the noise. You're right. It's also preventing her from making money. Full stop. Carry like many musicians, have lost their venues and places to play. You can't even busk in the city of Toronto right now. So what people do is they've moved to live streaming and they do shows at home and they record them or do them live onto social media and ask for tips. Most of the musicians I've talked to are on CERB, but in urban areas, CERB isn't enough money to get by and they're reliant on making money this way. So many are on Twitter and Facebook but they're all kind of scattered around and you can tell that some have it easier than others and it's all depending on where they live. You can't do anything if you have a jackhammer going on in the apartment next to you or outside on the street, you know, dumping big dump trucks full of garbage. You can't get anything done. You can't perform anyone. You can't make a living. Yes, that can be highly distracting. And I believe you mentioned in your piece that she was trying to do a live concert or a live stream of some sort and she wasn't able to, right? You're right. So she had a show she was about to do. She'd gone on, she'd promoted it online. She got dressed up. She did her hair and makeup. Not a lot of people are doing that these days because they're not going out. Got her instrument ready, all of her technology in place. And then the jackhammering began and her show was dead in the water and she had to cancel. And obviously our listeners are not unfamiliar with my constant cribbing about the difficulties of recording a podcast, mostly from a closet because of condo construction, which is right outside in my city place neighborhood. But it seems to me like everywhere we look, people are talking about the stress of the noise and the nonstop construction. And you were talking about different neighborhoods as well, Brian. Is it just me or is this happening in downtown Toronto? Are certain areas noisier? 
It's certainly Toronto wide. And I spoke with MPP Suze Morrison, who confirmed she's heard it all through Toronto Centre, which is a long swath. But speaking to other musicians who live away, you'll notice we still have development all along the Gardner, all along the Allen Expressway, all along the DVP and the 427 and Etobicoke. We have more cranes in the sky than we ever have before. So this issue is not isolated to Carrie and her building. Everybody across the city, no matter what their living circumstances, are experiencing this to some degree. And you talked to others as well who are dealing with similar disturbances. Tell me more about them and how they've been struggling. You talked to people, I think uh, they responded to you on Twitter and elsewhere as well. And is the noise problem more acute for some than others? Noise is impactful to any of us, even people like you and I who work on podcasts, right? Not only musicians, everybody's trying to make a living or just trying to have a little bit of work-life balance in a different time. But there are people out there like shift workers. No matter what your industry, you work at night when noise isn't allowed between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., but then you need to be able to sleep in the day. There was a nurse I talked to who said she's used up all her sick time She's too tired to be able to work efficiently because she can't sleep because there's construction all around near where she lives. There are parents who are trying to teach their children at home and homeschooling and set their children up for remote learning who can't do it. Parents even just trying to have meetings and things like that. It's something that could impact everybody. In fact, Suze Morrison, who is the MPP who I mentioned and the tenants' right critic, She had said that she's had more complaints than ever before, and that noise and tenant rights are two standout issues when it comes to living in the pandemic. And have you had any experiences with that? What's your neighborhood been like? Quiet? Noisy? (laughs) I actually, right before COVID, moved out of the city into the suburbs in a residential area of Hamilton. And what was interesting to me, when I lived in Toronto, I found I adapted to regular noise. I didn't have so much construction where I lived. I lived in Bloor West Village, but I adapted to the sound of Bloor Street West. And I recently came back and stayed in Toronto for a week at an Airbnb between lockdowns. And I was thrown. I was near Parkdale, where there is development happening. And I couldn't sleep at night. I was really shocked at the amount of noise there. And I was totally not accustomed to that. So I was happier to escape out back to my residential home when that was over. But you know, not everyone can do that. It's a privilege. And now I certainly appreciate it more. And what are some of the ways people are coping with this? Is there any way to navigate our way towards a quieter space, especially people who work with audio, like, let's say, totally randomly off the top of my head, podcasters, for instance, what can we do? In Carrie's case, or in other buildings where there may be renovation activity, for instance, it really does seem to be a sit and wait scenario. The advice from the MPP's office was to assemble as a group, get tenants together, talk about what your needs are, make it very clear, and try to go forward from there. Tenants do have more rights than what people seem. There's just a bureaucratic process that seems a little scary and people don't like to follow it. But we're getting to the point where for some people, including Carrie and her other chestnuts, where it's time. And they're actually taking a litigious route in order to reshape the activity that's happening in a building like theirs. Right. Or there's me. I've started scheduling my interviews around the construction workers' lunch breaks and other breaks in between. So we're all trying to make do here. Well, there's lots of people out there. There's a musician I talked to and she said, I moved to the cottage. Well, wonderful that you have one and take that opportunity. But she got to the cottage and she realized, oh, shoot, I don't have the same internet capability that I have when I'm at home in the city. And she hadn't thought of that. And even her work is impacted. Some people have suggested to Carrie and other people, well, why don't you get an Airbnb away? Or why don't you rent some studio space? Well, in current government restrictions, those things aren't allowed right now. Right. Thank you so much for your time. And it's so good to have you on the mic instead of all the awesome work that you do behind the scenes, Brian. Well, you too, Sal. Thank you very much for having me. That was Brian Bradley, the star's digital producer. We'll be right back. There's actual data to support that it really isn't just me and you, but in fact, millions of Canadians think their lives have gotten noisier than before the pandemic. So what's going on? Have certain areas gotten more noisy or have we gotten less tolerant after being driven to the edge by COVID-19 and its consequences? The Star's Vancouver reporter Joanna Chu actually researched this 
and she's joining me now to help cut through the noise. Hi, Joanna. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Saba. Thanks for having me. So how are you faring in BC? I hear you have a noise story of your own, like most of us, which has led you to some pretty interesting research for a story, right? So tell me what happened. So last year, I actually moved away from the city of Vancouver. So I'm like a couple hours away in kind of almost like a countryside area, partly for more space with my husband after getting married and to have a more quiet life. (laughs) So... Pretty much that stopped, you know, working because last October, new houses started being built right next to my development. And they've been jackhammering (laughs) since almost every day since late October. (laughs) So just gradually, I just, you know, as I became more sleep deprived, my sanity just started decreasing. I feel your pain. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, it's been going on almost every day. And what bothered me was that not only are the noise bylaws pretty lax in this area, so it's 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., so 15 hours a day where noise can happen. They were also starting sometimes before 7 a.m., including on Saturdays and public holidays. So I think many younger people, we don't just have one job. Like after I'm done work at the Star, I've been working on my book at night. So Some people have said, oh, just go to bed earlier. But (laughs) for a lot of people, that's not the solution. And when you're working long hours at at home and you notice noise pollution, it just really, really is hard to stay, you know, mentally healthy and happy during, you know, this ongoing pandemic and all of its stressors. Right. And that's what led you to speak to experts to find out just how other Canadians were feeling about noise pollution, right? In fact, there was a national survey conducted by another person going nuts by the noise as well, correct? Yeah. So Mario Canseco, he's a well-known researcher in Canada. So he had the idea to do this national survey after, you know, last Halloween, his neighbors not only set off fireworks on Halloween night, but I guess they were bored or had extra fireworks. So they set off fireworks right outside his home for several days <laughs> afterwards. Yikes. So, <laughs> because maybe a previous year, 2019, he might not have been bothered because he might not even be home. He might be working somewhere else or he could just leave and go to a coffee shop. But because we're staying home partly to be safe and to keep other people safe, noise like near your house is going to be all the more aggravating and stressful. So he asked all Canadians in both urban and rural settings in each province. And overall, more than one in four Canadians agreed that life seems noisier in the past year than it did in previous years. And for millennials, 18 to 34 years old, that number was way higher. It was almost 80% said they were bothered by outside noises when they're at home in the past year. Right. So from the survey, did it seem like millennials are probably the group most affected by this noise? And also, did it talk about what kinds of noises exactly are bothering people the most? Like, I think we're pretty sure which ones they are for you and I, Joanna. But (laughs) yeah, yeah, it makes sense that millennials and younger people are going to be more bothered because we're more likely to live in apartment buildings or, you know, we're not going to be living in mansions on acreage, right? We're not going to have that much space. We're going to have neighbors right next to us. And we might be, you know, hustling, doing multiple jobs, already stressed out. Financial stressors might be more of a factor that's already such a high source of stress. So when you're already stressed, you're more likely to feel more agitated by additional stressors and noise. Um, I talked with a UBC audiology expert is one of the most like primal stress triggers for humans and animals. When scientists want to do experiments on stressing animals out, they just use noise. Any particular kind of noises that are bothering people in this survey? Well, actually, like both of us, like we have jackhammering, right? That we're dealing with. (laughs) And actually, when I wrote the story, I think a lot of people replied back with their own stories of construction right outside because it's just so noisy. You can't build a building without making a lot of noise. So it's going to bother a lot of people. But this survey didn't actually ask about construction. It asked about other neighborhood noises that people are noticing now. Some of the top stressors Canadians felt were just driving them batty was unnecessary noise from vehicles, such as motorcycles and cars revving up, or there are you know, alarms going off, dogs barking, and loud people outside their home. And that's interesting because there's an element where if the noise comes from people, 
And then you perceive them as acting selfishly or they're making noise that they don't need to make. Like they could put a muffler on their car or they could train their dog not to bark so much. That's going to stress you out more because your agitation compounds because you're frustrated at the person for their behavior. Whereas as if it's a bunch of little kids playing outside your window, depending on how much you like kids, you might not be as angry at them. Right. That's very interesting, sort of how we perceive the source of that noise to be. And in terms of the kinds of noises that are bothering people, I'm definitely voting for the constant drilling outside. In fact, in order to cope, it's been bothering me so much that I've actually started playing a counter noise to cope with it. So I've got white noise on on my Google Home. What about you? Have you been finding some ways to cope with the irritating noises? And what did you find out in your story are some ways that we can do that? Yeah, it's tough because like our colleague, Brian, that you spoke with, he did a story about musicians trying to record music at home Yeah, with all the drilling happening in construction sites. And for me, definitely, I do interviews all day. I'm not like you. I don't have to record them and have good sound quality, but it is really hard to concentrate on work and talking to people when it's just like da 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 like yeah. <laughs> outside my head. Like it's really hard to block it out. And I've tried different things, but as far as for me, what happened, that helped make things better was I tried to do something about it because I looked up the bylaws and well first they were pretty lax so I wrote to my city council being like is there any chance this could be changed like given even on public holidays the noise can be 15 hours a day it's not you know for kids and babies they actually need more than that time to sleep at night so (laughs) the bylaws in place in Canada being so lax means that it's going to have a health impact on people. So I did talk to the city and I talked to the construction workers and at least I was able to get the bylaw enforcement to ask the construction company to at least start at seven and not before seven, like they were doing before. So that little bit of trying to take control of the situation made me feel better. And I think most people, according to the survey, even when the noise pollution was against bylaws, most people didn't report it. They felt it was useless. But the thing is, if the bylaw enforcement officers don't know something's being broken, there's no way they can do anything about it. So trying to take control, like maybe if it's a neighbor who's always gathering outside your window and having a loud conversation with other neighbors, you can just politely ask if they could move on because you're trying to work. So not always just trying to grin and bear it. I think we, especially in Canada, have this attitude where don't make a big deal, don't make a fuss. And that could maybe just make you feel even more frustrated at the end if there is a little thing you can do. I guess there's obvious things like earplugs and noise canceling headphones. But again, there's kind of like a privilege issue there where noise canceling headphones are expensive. They often, for me at least, get broken or lost. So I didn't want to spend hundreds of dollars on noise canceling headphones. So it is tough to cope. And I think a lot of us are just waiting for the pandemic to be over so we can go back to offices and coffee shops and co-working spaces and just not be home all the time. Yeah, I am into that. And it's interesting that you also mentioned the health aspect here. Is this having a significant impact on our health? I know you spoke to health experts and audiologists about that. Yeah. So for me, definitely, like I'm losing sleep and I can't be good for health. <laughs> stress levels, everyone know, like stress is related to so many different illnesses. And at UBC in Vancouver, professors did a very large scale study on the health impacts of noise pollution from traffic noises. And they actually found like some pretty disturbing things like noise exposure when it's chronic leads to diabetes, pregnancy complications, more incidents of heart disease. So definitely these are some serious consequences and links of noise exposure. So I think it's an interesting conversation to be had when we see that both in urban and rural areas in Canada, people feel like they're being stressed out by noise. This could have a really big impact on Canadians' health and healthcare costs and things like that. And I think there's this whole psychological aspect to this also. Would this have been a big deal if it wasn't COVID-19? Have neighborhoods become noisier or are we just becoming more intolerant and sensitive to these sounds because we're, we're stuck at home and we're dealing with the pressures of lockdown and work from home as well? Definitely COVID means we are stuck at home because we feel safe is here. So for me, I guess for lots of people, people feel they have no escape if they feel around their home, it's too noisy. And this wouldn't have been the case if it wasn't a pandemic. If this construction was happening since October, I would have camped out at a coffee shop every single day. Like that would have been fine. 
So another aspect that's interesting that the UBC researcher told me about was that new noises are more stressful to us. So there may have been like the same noises, dogs barking, people talking loudly every day, but we may not have noticed it because we weren't home 24 hours a day. So these noises are new to us. And when something's new, it's more likely to be more stressful. Right. Thank you so much for that insight and for your time, Joanna. And I wish you some peace and quiet in your days to come. I think it just helps to know that you're not alone, that it's not just in your head. It's not like a mind over matter thing that a lot of people are struggling. And it's definitely normal to feel very, very stressed out because of noise around your house. Yes, for sure. We're all hearing this together. Thanks so much, Joanna, and stay safe. Yeah, you too. I was talking to the Star's Vancouver reporter, Joanna Chu. That's it for today. Thanks so much for listening. This Matters is hosted and produced by me, Sabai Tazaz, Adrian Chung, and Raju Mutter. Produced and mixed by Sean Pattenden, and our director of programming is JP Fozo. Our show theme music is by So Called, and our episode music is by Mike DeAngelis. We want to hear what stories matter to you. Please send us comments, questions, or ideas to thismatters at thestar.ca. Please consider supporting the journalism the Toronto Star Newsroom does at thestar.com. And don't forget to subscribe to This Matters on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Let's talk soon. Thank you.